A big day today. Gillette Stadium wrapping up its latest season, vaccination season. The home to the Pats and the Revs, Gillette was the first mass vaccination site to open in the entire state. But now after nearly six months and more than 600,000 shots, it has officially closed as a mass vaccination site. And this also comes as health experts say nearly 4 million Massachusetts residents are now fully vaccinated. Yeah, it's a major milestone. And here's another one. The state of emergency will end at midnight tonight. It really feels like we're getting back to normal just in time for summer. But... We can't let our guards up just yet because there is a new variant of COVID-19 that local doctors are watching very closely as it continues to wreak havoc on nations overseas. And that is our starting point tonight. This feels like deja vu. And that is Dr. Cassandra Pierre, an epidemiologist at the Boston Medical Center, who says that the new Delta variant is different. Delta coronavirus that we're seeing is causing twice the amount of hospitalizations in the UK um, and probably elsewhere when compared to the previous variant of concern. So this is no joke. This is a very serious concern. And experts believe that right now the Delta variant is on its way to becoming the dominant strain of COVID-19 in the United States, raising concerns that outbreaks could hit unvaccinated people this fall. You just heard Dr. Pierre say it feels like deja vu, and that's because we've seen this before. Variants that emerge overseas and eventually become a menace here at home. Right now, Britain is facing a setback. They were supposed to end COVID restrictions next week. Instead, their prime minister, Boris Johnson, announced today that he's delaying the country's reopening a full month, all because of this Delta variant. So now places like restaurants, pubs and movie theaters can't fully reopen until at least July 19th. And this is happening despite the fact that Britain has about 44 percent of its population vaccinated. And that is actually one percent more than what we have here in the United States, which currently our vaccination rate stands at about 43 percent of our entire nation. And the prime minister said that he made this decision there in, in Great Britain primarily because of this variant. Dr. Mark Seidner, an infectious disease specialist at MGH, says this variant is really cause for concern. We know it's more contagious. We know it's more severe. It appears to potentially be affecting younger people. And for people out there that really are at, remain on the fence about these, these vaccines and whether they're useful and whether they need them themselves, if you didn't need another reason, you know, this new variant could be. It, it's clearly going to be putting people at risk, much more so than the other viruses that we've been seen circulating. And if there was a time, now is the time to get vaccinated before this variant, this variant becomes the predominant one here. You know, protect yourselves, protect your families and protect your community. And Dr. Seidner says as long as the virus is circulating around the world and there are countries with a lot of people who are not vaccinated, these variants, they're going to continue to emerge. And right now, the Delta variant is responsible for more than 90 percent of new cases in the U.K. Ninety percent are the Delta. This variant was first identified in India, though. You may remember some of the devastating images from earlier this spring there. The spread of this variant, coupled with India's crippling health care system, was actually really just a perfect storm. Hospitals were full, oxygen supplies were low there, and people died waiting in line to be seen by doctors. There were wait lists to get into hospitals. There were mass graves because bodies were piling up so fast as well. Devastation truly everywhere in that nation. At one point, it estimated about 2,000 people each and every day were dying. And since then, the Delta variant has spread to more than 70 countries. Here are some of the hardest hit areas. Take a look at that map. The variant not only spreading far and wide, it's spreading especially fast. And that's what's so concerning. And it's concerning Dr. Ashish Jha. He's a professor at Brown University who you might have seen on television before. He's a leading authority on the pandemic and our response to it. And he shares these concerns about the variant this morning, citing that it's the most contagious variant. And of course, he pointed to that death toll in India. Now, you've probably heard this isn't the only variant of COVID to emerge from this pandemic. There have been several mutations over the last six, eight months, some of which you probably heard of. But it does get a little bit confusing because they recently underwent a name change. All of them. As we said, the Delta variant first detected in India. This is in October of last year, 2020. The technical name for it, B1617.2, you probably never heard it, right? You heard it as the India variant instead, kind of like the South Africa variant or the UK variant. Yeah, that's the variant that were popping up that were being referred to by the country that they were most prevalent in. But that recently changed. It really was for good reason, because the World Health Organization was concerned about the negative connotation that countries could be subjected to if their name was signed up 
synonymous with a COVID-19 strain. So they implemented a new naming system, and this one is based on the Greek alphabet. Now, you might remember Tim mentioned the UK variant. You may have heard that a few months ago. It's now known as the Alpha variant, the first letter, of course, in the Greek alphabet. Yeah, around the same time the Alpha variant was ravaging Britain, another mutation appeared in South Africa. That one is now known as the Beta variant. And then if you don't know the Greek alphabet, the next letter is actually G, not C, it's gamma. So the gamma variant was given to the name of the mutation that appeared in Brazil. This one was particularly bad, killing as many as 4,000 people a day down in Brazil. And health professionals kind of admit that this renaming recently, it is a bit confusing. You know, maybe if they had done this in the beginning, it would have been um intelligible, I think. You know, we've already been asking people to get a minor in public health and pharmacology, and now we're asking people to, you know, get up to speed in their Roman and, and Greek lettering as well. Um, it's a lot to take in, I think, even for, you know, for people in the medical field who have a sense that, you know, alpha means like the most potent, the most transmissible, the most virulent virus, and so now that's changing. Um, it's the alpha is not even the alpha anymore. Yeah, and alpha in the typical term that we usually use it for. But if you think of variants more like iPhones, essentially each one that comes out has new features. And sometimes, Tim, they pack a lot more power. Nobody's dying to get these, though. We've already told you that this one, Delta, is more contagious. But how much more contagious is quite alarming. Check this out. The original virus, the original COVID from a year ago that first appeared in Wuhan, China, it has a contagious rate between 2.4 and 2.6. What does that mean? Well, on average, one infected person would infect about two to three healthy people, 2.4 to 2.6. The alpha variant, the one that originated in the UK, that one's got about a four to five person transmission rate. Again, it means one infected person could infect about five healthy individuals. Fast forward now to the Delta variant. Its number, get this, is between five and eight people. That's four times as contagious as the original strain of COVID-19. Yeah, so as Tim just outlined, it's a lot more contagious, and it's making millennials sicker, too. Previous versions of the virus were more deadly for older people, but this one seems to be impacting people in their 20s, 30s, and 40s. And another big difference here, the symptoms. Delta variant symptoms are similar to that of the original virus, like headache, fever, chills, and muscle aches, also joint pain, but they're much more severe. And there are also new symptoms that patients are having, like stomach pain, vomiting, nausea, even hearing loss. And increasingly, it also looks like it's more severe. There's some data out of the UK that have checked it quite closely that seem to suggest that people who get infected with this new variant may be as much as twice as likely to be hospitalized as people with prior variants. And the fact that coronavirus is mutating really is not shocking at all. It's actually something that most living organisms do. You've heard of evolution, right? Think of this as the evolution of a virus. It's exactly what it is. It helps it adapt and survive. If you really think about it, a virus spreads. So many people will develop antibodies to it. And if enough people get those antibodies, either, you know, from exposure or through vaccination, the virus can't continue to thrive and spread. So what does it do? Well, it mutates to evade these antibodies and infect more people. And as it morphs, it can get stronger. Some of these mutations allow the virus to behave differently. Maybe they get into our bodies a little bit easier. Maybe they bind to our cells a little bit easier. Uh, may maybe they become more severe by attacking us a little bit more strongly. And so each mutation has the potential uh, to change the way the virus works, to change the way we get infected, and to change the way our body can respond to the virus and, and get on top of it. I know what you're thinking. All of this is kind of scary, especially after the last year we've been through. But the good news in all this is that our vaccines have actually been proven to work against this specific Delta variant. British researchers analyzed data for more than 14,000 cases of the Delta variant, and they found that the Pfizer vaccine was 96% effective against hospitalization after two doses of the vaccine. Keep that in mind. And that two doses of the AstraZeneca vaccine reduced the risk of hospitalization by 92%. Now, these studies also underscored the need for people to get both doses of the vaccine. You need two to be fully vaccinated because both the Pfizer and AstraZeneca vaccines were significantly less effective after only one shot. 
And encouraging news came out today, actually, in the fight against these variants as well, in the form of a new vaccine. Novavax releasing data from its phase three clinical trials saying its COVID vaccine is 90% effective at preventing people from getting sick. And it proved to be 93% effective against virus variants, which could make that shot a very good option for booster doses. The U.S. is going to need uh, booster shots uh, later this year, and I think our vaccine will be uh, very useful for that. The world has to be vaccinated to stop the pandemic, and our vaccine uh, is one of the tools in that toolkit. And Novavax will apply for emergency use authorization in September, Tim. And over the weekend, the leaders of the richest countries in the entire world also pledged to donate 1 billion COVID-19 vaccine doses to poor countries. The U.S. and other countries of the G7 have been criticized for not sharing more vaccines with countries that have fewer resources. And health officials say sharing vaccines is really the only way to fight these mutations, mutations and fully end this pandemic. Less than 5% of people in the rest of the world are vaccinated. And if we want to protect ourselves and our you know, fellow people across the world, I think the number one priority right now is to find a way to get these vaccines to other parts of the world, make sure they're also accessible there and, and get on top of this epidemic, not just here, but in the rest of the world. Yeah, and that's the important part, too, is because as you see these pop up and we were looking at the World Health Organization's list, you have these four variants right now. There's a couple kind of in the works, too. Yeah, they're not as prevalent. They're not as bad, but they're looking into them. And Dr. Seidner said that the Delta variant is already here in yeah. New England, that it's about 10 percent of the cases here in New England. So not much, but it's a growing number. And that is concerned that me by fall, that it could be a big problem. These epidemiologists keeping a close eye on it. Obviously, it feels like we're towards that finish line, almost out of the woods, but you can't get too comfortable knowing there are other things mutating and getting worse elsewhere in the world.